Charmaine here and it's been a while but welcome to a paper craft tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this thread book envelope. So this one is sort of like derived from one of my earlier tutorials which is the thread book pen pal folder. If you want to see the full version of it, just click on the description. That pen pal folder is a whole lot more complicated, but in this video, I'm going to show you just one of the components and it's super easy. I'm going to try to break down everything to its basic fundamentals so that you can easily adjust the size of your threadbook envelope. But of course, as always, before we jump into the tutorial itself, do take the time to click subscribe, turn on notifications, and give this video a thumbs up. So let's get started. I filmed this tutorial with a live voiceover, so bear with the ambient noise. Hi everyone. So the basic fundamentals of this fold is that you will need a total of 10 squares, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And the size of each square will determine the final size of your thread book envelope. So as you can see, this one is a six centimeter by six centimeter one. And if I put it here, it's approximately the same size. So you can easily adjust the size of your thread book by just simply adjusting the size. For example, you want it to be bigger, 10 by 10 centimeters. So just make each square as 10 by 10 centimeters. But of course, if you're going to do that, you're going to need a larger sheet. And if you want it smaller, for example, 3 by 3 centimeters, just make 3 by 3 squares. And just make sure that you always have five squares on top and five squares on bottom and that they are all of the same size. So that's basically it. Now we begin with the folding part. So first is we fold it upwards towards the center on the long side and make a pronounced crease where I fold it um, as you can see I can still see the guidelines so we're gonna fold there this time I'm going to ask you to do a series of mountain folds so a mountain fold is basically when you fold a sheet of paper and the arrow or the pointed part points upwards like this like a mountain so we're just gonna do a series of mountain folds on all these guidelines okay. so once you have folded everything it's gonna look something like this and it should come to a square like this the next step is we are going to open it up like so. Make sure the point is facing towards you. The mountain point is facing towards you. And now we are going to do a valley fold, but this time diagonal. We will take this corner and just fold it up all to the other side to create your diagonal valley fold. So a valley fold is just the opposite of a mountain fold. That just means the point or the top part is pointing downwards and not upwards. So once you have that one, you just continue on with the rest of the series and just keep on folding your, your diagonals in the same manner. So it's gonna look something like this. It's a bit confusing, but don't worry. I'll help you navigate your way through this one. So look for the top part where you have that opening and 
make a square so just follow your mountain folds a while ago so that you can make a square and then take one of the squares and insert it so you have like a little flap thing and it's gonna just lock itself there and you will have like a square shape you can leave it as is but what i like to do just to make it more secure is to add double-sided tape onto the one that i tuck in just so it's more secure and it holds the whole thing in place much better when i'm going to do the reset lock and there you go so you're gonna have like a square like this I'm going to change the angle of the camera so that you can have a better look as to how I will do this because this is usually the tricky part. And what I try to do is I put a finger in between the two sheets like so. You can see that. And hold up. Okay. So once I have like everything on there, like sort of it looks like this, I just slowly fold it downwards and push everything downwards. And it should just fold like so. I'm just gonna press it down some more and look, you have your little base and you have the bottom of your envelope right there and now that you have that holding the top part is easier because it's just outside so just simply press down on the diagonal creases it is a bit tricky when you do the first fold but once the whole thing has been pressed down it is gonna work like it is gonna work like a mechanical contraption of sorts. So just fold everything down. There you go. And 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 and. and. Okay, it's a bit difficult, but yeah, because it's a bit difficult because the bottom the bottom folds are pushing it up but once you get a hang of it it should just lay flat like this Ta -da! and there you go so just press it down like so that see now that we've already pressed it earlier it's just gonna go like this no, it's a whole lot easier once you've already folded it down because it already knows where it should fold down. So I made three of these and I'm going to put a bunch of different things inside each one of them. And I'm going to show you how I am going to decorate each envelope. So that's essentially the tutorial part of this video. I filled all of these third book envelopes with different types of stationery and also a bit of floral dust just to mix it up and of course to give it that character i added in some washi tapes stamps so i'm going to give this as a set so it's just really nice to have like a set of three and each pocket or each envelope is filled with a different kind of stationery. So I added some stickers and some embellishments just to make all three of these envelopes color coordinated, theme coordinated, and they just look great together as a group or as a set of three. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully I made the process a whole lot easier to understand, especially when you're changing the size up or changing the size down. Thank you so much for watching this video through till the end.
If you have any suggestions or if you want some more paper craft tutorials, let me know in the comment section. Don't forget to tag me on Instagram if you get to recreate any of my paper craft tutorials. I'd love to see your version. Again, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.